Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Crypto Daily. Gonna have a quick look at the market, see what's going on. Then, got a few things to talk about today. I mentioned my strategy going to the August 1st fork as being one thing, but then it seems everyone else had the same idea. So, I'm gonna need to change my plans and I'm gonna talk to you about what I plan to do for the August 1st fork. Is via BTC the group behind? Bitcoin Cash. Down a little bit, but generally up since some of the lows that we saw yesterday. Now it was really interesting to see this happening because at least with Bitcoin's price, during the night it seems to go up, during the day it seems to come down, and it depends where on where on, on the earth that you live. Generally, let's say when the Americans are waking up, Bitcoin comes down, and when let's say the Chinese are waking up, Koreans, Japanese, Bitcoin price goes up. And that's fairly predictable. It, it always seems to happen that way. Generally, it's not surprising to wake up and see a day full of red on the weekend. When people have more time to, I guess, manage their assets on a weekend when they're not working, that generally tends to mean more selling, which I guess is a little strange. There might be another reason for it, but there you go. It keeps happening every weekend. Litecoin below $40. This is the first time that Litecoin has been below 40 at least in the past two weeks. I think two weeks ago, it very briefly went under 40, but then it was at least two weeks before that, that was the last time it was below 40. So good recover, especially when Bitcoin uh, transactions will be suspended on August 1st on most exchanges. Then if people are wanting to transact on that day, the second biggest coin in terms of buying altcoins, I think would be Litecoin. So could go up on that day. Bitcoin dominance is at 51%. It's crossed 51. It's crossed the 50 mark for the first time in about a month. Is that right? It's, it fell to a new low last month of around 40%. And that's down from about 80% dominance in March. Now, if you're not sure what I mean about Bitcoin dominance, you have a look at the total market cap today is $86 billion. That means that Bitcoin basically owns 51% of that money. All the rest of the money are, are in all the other coins. Now from March, it was at 80% and it's fallen to 40% last month or a new low of 40%. But that doesn't mean that Bitcoin was steadily declining. It just meant that the altcoins were increasing in value faster than Bitcoin was. But Bitcoin back now to nearly 52%. I think this is because people want more Bitcoin cash. Just like I mentioned, my strategy was to do that. I wanted to move my altcoins into Bitcoin so I could get some more free Bitcoin cash on August 1st. But everyone else seems to want to do the same thing. So there are some great deals. I mean, just have a look at the market. Everything's on sale. Now, I'm not going to tell you which coins I think you should buy. I will tell you what I've been doing. But please, it's not financial advice. Don't sue me. I'm not a financial advisor, blah, blah, blah. I personally have bought some Factum yesterday. I bought it at around $16. I thought that was a great price. I like Factum. I think it's a really, really, really boring project if you read about it, but it has great potential. I also bought some Steam. I think Steam has a great following. I actually was lucky enough to get some at around 90 cents. It was certainly in the 90s. Steam, I think, is a long-term hold. At least for me, that's what I plan to do. And that's what I plan to do with a lot of coins that I buy, is to buy and hold with an aim for at least three to four months. Now, I'm not saying there isn't money to be made day trading or trading more generally. If you see a huge spike in price, definitely can be money to be made. And I do that with some coins, but I don't do that with most. Some of these coins, I just hold on to. I think it's easily, easily done where you could lose money trading very easily but it's it's kind of hard to lose money if you hold as long as you didn't buy on an up and you bought on a down i think it's kind of hard to lose money if you're looking at a three four month time scale another coin i bought was no limit coin no limit coins a great project their website is about to go live they don't currently have the platform up and running so it's very early days for this coin in case you didn't know it's a fantasy sports coin big market it's taking on these are just some of the the, the altcoins i'm interested in. i'm very interested in use cases for coins i don't like the idea of a bitcoin clone even even something like ethereum which it, it, it has a lot of promises, a lot of potential, but as for what it's delivering today or in the very immediate future, doesn't really do much. So I like coins that can be used. That's just my rationale. That's how I like to invest. So Aliyah asks, what do I think of Stellar Lumens? Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm not sure about this one. So you see this huge growth here. There's theories that this was a pump and dump and it was a targeted one as well because it had DDoS attacks on exchanges at the time so that they could basically very maliciously pump up the price and dump. This kind of growth here very quickly corrected itself. It's probably still on the down for the moment, but who knows where it could go. I think, uh, so Stellar Lumens, it, it has a uh, good idea, but it's not the first one to do it. it. It's actually made by the same developers as Ripple, who, if you didn't know, plan to facilitate banks transferring currencies, multi-currency transfers, basically. The idea for the banks is if they were to use a cryptocurrency, for example, Ripple or Lumens, they could, using a blockchain, cut costs, which is billions uh, of operating costs a year. So it, it has a really good idea. It has a good use case. It's one of those that I like. That's something that I'd be interested in investing in. The only problem with, with Stellar is it's not the first to do it. And I think for the moment, it, it's on a down or sideways, at least until some news comes out. I think if they announce that uh, we've got five banks that have signed on with us that want to use us, then we're not really going to see any growth. News just seems to keep coming out about Ripple and the banks that are signing up with it. I mean, just in my country alone, in the UK, Santander, which is a huge bank, is, is using it. The Bank of England recently made a statement saying they were testing it, and those caused big price increase for Ripple. We need something like that for Stellar. That's the thing. There's a saying that says you trade the rumors and you sell the news. So it's kind of like a gamble, right? If you buy after the news, it's kind of too late and you would need to be in there before. In order to make money, you have to take a gamble. It's probably not a gamble I'd like to take simply because it's not the first to do it. And we've seen how important it is that you're the first. I mean, let's have a look. Litecoin is faster than Bitcoin. NEM is faster than Bitcoin. Dash is much faster than Bitcoin. IOTA, much faster, much cheaper, free actually. And the list goes on. There's so many coins that do what Bitcoin does, but better, but because they weren't the first, they're nowhere near. That doesn't mean that there isn't still money to be made with the other ones, but I kind of like betting on winners, or at least trying to. So a Bitcoin exchange in Sweden has said they will track what the market considers to be Bitcoin following the fork on Tuesday, which I think is kind of a silly thing to do. Obviously, the market is going to follow what is referred to as Bitcoin, and that's going to be what continues to be Bitcoin. The name is so important. Bitcoin Cash won't overtake it, at least in the midterm, because it's not the original. Even though the design is more original than Bitcoin, it's kind of a silly situation, but there's a caveat there. If the SegWit 2X plan does not go into full effect, and by that I mean, we know that SegWit's locking in, it's nearly there, about 2,000 more blocks to, to mine and then it's active. If they fail to go through with the 2X part, which is the doubling of the block size limit from one to two megabytes, I think November 1st is when that's due. If they don't go ahead with that, then I can see a huge amount of support going to Bitcoin Cash because they plan to increase the block size limit from one to eight immediately. You know, that's their kind of unique selling point. So they have to do that. Bitcoin.com has gone as far as to say it will support Bitcoin Cash if it does that. So if we have a look at this website, it shows us the hash rate distribution around the world. So the biggest mining company is Antpool with 20% of the hash rate power. Bitcoin.com though is a huge player at 10%. So that is a big deal. I think the, the threat of Bitcoin.com switching their mining capacity to Bitcoin Cash, if the 2X part doesn't go through, they're basically strong arming all the others into saying, you better do it or we'll go elsewhere. I think that threat is enough to make sure that the 2X part of the upgrade goes through. But yeah, there's definitely the thought that it might not because miners are more incentivized to have slower transactions, bigger fees. It makes more money for them. But Bitcoin currently is, is slow and it's dying. And I, I don't mean in the sense of a financial sense. I just mean that it's slow, painfully slow to use right now. And it's just getting slower. So it's dying. We need a lot. And I mean a lot of scalability improvements implemented into Bitcoin like last year. So is Via BTC the ones behind the Bitcoin Cash fork? They've been accused of being the ones, the Chinese, behind the whole movement. 
but they claim they are neutral in what's going on. So Hypo Yang, the CEO of Via BTC, spoke with Coindesk and is quoted to say on whether they choose to mine Bitcoin Cash when it forks. It depends on the miners. It's their choice. They can choose to mine Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash. We are just an exchange platform. We are neutral on this. So they're the ones being accused of being behind the Bitcoin Cash hard fork. And it kind of seems that way because they're also exchanging Bitcoin Cash futures on their exchange before the coins even exist. So it looks like they're they're pushing the movement. But in their defense, they stated that they plan to offer future coins for the Bitcoin Improvement Plan 148 when that was a potential of a fork as well. And in fact, they did, although the trading wasn't very good, as they say. So they're doing the same thing again. I can understand why they'd be accused of being the ones behind the Bitcoin Cash hard fork. They're actually stating that it's a, a Western invention and that they're not behind it. But there you go. Now, a lead developer named Kalen Kulianu, I'm sorry if I got the name wrong, contributing to the code of the development of Bitcoin Cash has said that her secret gut feeling is that Bitcoin Cash may surprise all of us. It is not entirely possible that Bitcoin Cash will become the de facto Bitcoin coin after a few months. The much roomier eight megabyte block size limit is very attractive. I could be wrong. I don't think that Bitcoin Cash will overtake BTC ever. I don't think it matters how much time. I think that if the 2x part of Segwit 2x doesn't go into effect, then we could see quite a bit of the market going to Bitcoin Cash. But just the threat of that happening, I think, is enough to make sure that it does go through on November. But even if it doesn't go through, I do see somewhere anywhere between 5 and 20 percent of Bitcoin's value in Bitcoin Cash's total. Anyway, guys, thank you for listening. I will see you in the next one. Peace.